NRA Gun Show with your host, Chris Conrad. The BRA Gun Show. Conrad. I'm host of the BRA Gun Show. I'm here in Las Vegas, going to be driving around, going to the local gun shop, purchasing firearms, collectibles, and we're going to put those up for auction nationwide. We're going to go see our friends at the gun store and got a machine gun, ring, which I think is going to be a lot of fun. So we'll definitely have to check that out. Oh, there's hey, my friend Tony. Hey, Chris. How you doing? Good. Good. Welcome Thank to the you. gun store. Thank you. We sell handguns, long guns, machine guns, accessories, wow. souvenirs. We're big in the tourist business. A lot of our people come here from all over the world. They see us all over the world. And we get some unusual guns. We get some very strange stuff. So, yeah, I would think uh, so. Yeah. yeah. This is Vegas, man. This is the M249 saw. Belgium made, belt fed, 5.56 caliber, same as the M16. Uh, this particular one, when they first designed it, you could shoot either a belt, or you, if you ran out of belts, you could put an M16 mag in here. You use it either way. Uh, this is a pair of saw barrels, a short barrel. Uh, this has got the hydraulic pot stock on it. It's got the EOTech sight, nice and laser sight. This is a fun gun to shoot. This is amazing. This is an experience that you're going to live, you're going to remember for a long time. We're going to do belt. This gun doesn't move. Because it's so heavy, you're going to lift, you're going to put your shoulder right on the wire stock. You're going to look through the holographic sight. You're going to see a circle with a dot. Put it right in the middle of uh, her Nazi zombie. All right, give me a short burst. All right, light him up. What I'm talking about. There you go. Excellent. Excellent. And you can see you did very, very well. Nice job. Thank you, sir. This has just been remarkable here. I, 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 you can't wipe the smile off your face when you come to this place. I, I'd like to thank you for your hospitality, and this this has been great. The only problem with this weapon is the belts are just too small. <laughs> <laughs> this was fabulous. This gun puts a smile on everybody's face. Absolutely. That was amazing. First of all, Tony... I've never been around somebody that knew that much about his product, and I saw a gun that, I, that I'll never see again. Two of those things were unique, new out of the box from the 30s, which, which is just incredible. And then, on top of it, it's like dessert, we get to go into the back and shoot machine guns. It's crazy. Now, we're off to see Khalif at uh, Second Amendment Gun Shop. Put into your auction. This is uh, A. Francati. 28 gauge side by side, uh, 26 inch barrels, double trigger, extractor gun, uh, choked and proof cylinder modified. Okay. One thing on this gun it is, this is the original butt plate and it has a factory 13 and a quarter inch length of pull, so it's shorter than standard. Uh, the person must have, have ordered it this way with a shorter length of pull maybe. So it wasn't his, cut down. So it wasn't it cut was, down. Oh, so it was, it was ordered, ordered this way. One. This gun was uh, imported by Abercrombie and Fitch. Oh, the Abercrombie and Fitch. The gun's off those lists. I got my first pistol from Abercrombie and Fitch, and I have a couple T-shirts. They used to, on my birthday, send me T-shirts because my mom was a avid gun collector, and uh, it's amazing because they imported really, really good stuff. It was a high-end right. sporting goods store. There was one in Chicago I know about, and I know there was one in Beverly Hills, and that's the one we used to go to. They always had fabulous stuff, and so these were from, like, they imported from Belgium and a bunch of other, and these are one of them. Exactly. Does it have the writing? Does it have the Abercrombie & Fitch It has Fitch Abercrombie & Fitch right on the barrel. Oh. Uh -huh, it sure does, right here. And uh, oh, yeah. this is, is all color case hardened frame uh, with some light engraving. Just a beautiful little gun. Yeah, a dove gun. I took this out uh, opening day of dove season and uh, worked very, very well. Yeah. Oh, that's it's great. Shot great. Now, let me ask you another question, though. Do you think it was so it was ordered with a short? It, do you think it was ordered for somebody's wife? 
could have been. The gentleman that uh, we got this from also uh, brought in another gun, 28 gauge. It was from Abercrombie and Fitch, and we have that one too. And that's a full length, standard, like 14 inch length to pull. This one's 13 and a quarter. Although, all we'd have to do is add a one inch recoil pad to this sure. gun. It would put it pretty much back into a standard length for somebody. Right, right. So you said that the, the stock wasn't cut down, but it was ordered that way. Yeah, this is a standard uh, factory uh, butt plate on here, and it has a 13 and a quarter uh, inch length of pull, which was ordered this way. So whoever ordered this gun probably ordered it for their son or wife, possibly. Dove hunting with the wife is always good fun. Yes. You could put this to standard length just by adding a recoil pad. That would pretty much put it at standard length. What are we looking at price-wise for this? Somewhere around $6,000. Yeah. For It's not just art, you know, it's, it's practical and, and, and you've shot it. Yes, these are known as one of the better gun manufacturers in the world. The Francati's are just excellent quality, top of the line. Fabulous. Well, let's take a closer look. Okay. This item is open for bidding. This is something real special. This is a Weatherby Mark V AccuMark. Mm -hmm. And essentially, it's a long-range varmint gun. Calibered to what? This is a 22-250 Remington. Uh, okay. Is the caliber. Small bullet, big shell. So. Yeah, this would be used by someone who uh, wants to shoot really precision targeting at 100 yards, 200 yards, or make a little ground squirrel go poof at 500 <laughs> yards. You know, that's, uh, that's kind of the thing that this is, uh, this is for. And it is a beautiful example of it. Now, it's, it's, this is made in the U.S. Okay. Uh, actually, right here in California. Hmm. What is the design of this stock? That's kind of unusual. Well, it's a target stock. It's hey. a composite stock with a gel coat finish. And it's really kind of interesting. It's called a spider web. And I don't know if they use real spider web or not. I mean, you know that the military uses spider web for reticles and scopes. Uh -huh, it's not right. affected by temperature and pressure. Mm -hmm. So very interesting stuff. And it just makes for a very interesting looking gun. And it's one of the, the trademark things of the Weatherby AccuMark. But the rifle itself overall is just a beautiful gun. You've got a 26 inch stainless steel fluted heavy barrel. Mm -hmm. And that's all about accuracy and distance. You know, So this is a great rifle, especially when you add in this Carl Zeiss Conquest scope. Really nice target scope. This is a six and a half to 20 by 50 scope. It's set up, massively set up for targets. It's just a beautiful scope, sure. extremely high quality. The scope's probably worth at least $1,000. Mm -hmm. The rifle, anywhere 1500 on up. I mean, uh, de depending on what words you're looking for. These They haven't made these since I think 2004 or something like that. Okay. And it's a, it's a very, very accurate rifle. This is for somebody who wants to put one hole in a target yeah. at, at uh, 100, 200, 300 yards and, and you know make a prairie dog disappear out of sure. 600. So it, it's a great rifle and it's a rigid, fun to shoot. Just doing, gonna be a wonderful toy for somebody. Next I have for you. Excellent. And the, the box. Smith & Wesson Model 66, no dash. This particular gun, revolver of course, 357 mag two and a half inch barrel. Smith & Wesson produced numerous model and variations of the models right. throughout the years. Right. And the no dash means it's basically the first generation. Right. And it does have the original box. Sure it does. Now do you have the wax paper in there? If you've got the brown wax paper in there, I am going to be really impressed. He's got the brown wax paper. All right. Now. We have 30-year-old brown wax paper. That is awesome. Now, when you took this out, I started smiling because in my family, this was the pistol that my mother gave every one of her kids when they turned 13. So we didn't have a bar mitzvah type thing, but this is what we're giving. I have uh, probably five or six of these, and each one of my uh, siblings has one too. And, and this is what we were given, but that's a, this is just a fabulous, and it's 
you know, it's famous, the, the Smith & Wesson. And you've got the blue box, which I love. And with this particular model, with it being the first generation, it is what they refer to as pinned and recessed, where they put a pin in to reinforce and hold the barrel in, and they recessed your rounds into your cylinder so that when it closed, you didn't have any gap in there and it was a stronger action than right. what they actually produce today. Right, right. right. Harder to produce as well. None of the ones that we had had the, um, the sights set up like that. They were the, just the old grooves with the pin up front, but th this is beautiful. And, and I didn't know, is this, is this new? Is this new in the box? Or is it, it? It has been fired, but very little wear. Yeah, I can't tell because Smith always gets, you, you get the lines mm -hmm. uh, on, uh, on the cylinder there and the cylinder drag. Yeah, always. But now, what are we talking on, on something like this? This one, with the stainless and with the original box, you're looking at anywhere from six hundred to a thousand dollars. That's a deal. That's that's a real. Are you are you sure? Yes. <laughs> okay, because that I might have to talk to you later. <laughs> anyway, let's take a closer look. This item is open for bidding. I believe that it's every American's right to own guns. I believe that we should have rights to carry armed weapons. As a woman, I think that it makes me feel secure. I feel like right now they're really strict. I feel like people should be able to own guns in their homes. I'd just say let the states continue to have more control over the people and govern themselves better. I think it would be nice to have one just in case. Like, it's an American's right to protect themselves as long as they're not doing like wrong by it. I think it's I think it's good. I'm in my apartment um, in the middle of the night. I felt someone came knocking at my door. I had no clue who it was and I had nothing on me. You know, and I feel like I need something to protect me. Hi, and welcome to the BRA Outdoor Show. I'm your host, Dennis Kildall, and we're going to be hunting all across the country as well as the nation. We'll be hunting in New Zealand for red stag and tar, in Alaska for brown bears and moose. We're also going to be going to Argentina, world renowned for its duck hunting. I'm looking forward to that. Today, we're in California. As you know, California's got some pretty strict gun laws, but they've got liberal hunting seasons. Duck season here in California goes from October all the way through January. It's a three month season. It's a great time. Year round in California, we're legally, we can hunt pigs, coyotes, and jackrabbits, as well as ground squirrels. Today, we're going coyote hunt. We got one coming. We got one coming right here. Oh, here we go. Today on the BRA Outdoor, we're hunting wild pigs in the scrub oak of the Tejon Ranch of Southern California. Let's go get us a hog. Oh, 
Got a nice poor hog right over here. Put a nice shoulder shot on him. He's down. He's still thumping, but he's down. Today on the BRA Outdoors, we're going deer hunting in the San Bernardino Mountains of Southern California. Come on along. Today, on the BRA Outdoors, we're dove hunting in the dove hunting capital of the United States, Yuma, Arizona. 